This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by Hello Pillow. Go to hellopillow.com forward slash rogue and try it risk free for 60 nights. Spoiler alert, you're not gonna send it back. You're not. You're just gonna hug it every night and you're gonna go, Oh, I love you, Hello Pillow. Do it. There's no shame. Feels good. That sounded weird. May I? Sure, sir. Good to move for talking. Yahweh. Penak Fakulu. Do some of your wizard shit, Brian. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, I need a volunteer from the audience. <laughs> <laughs>Oh my gosh, Jason Murphy, it's finally happening. We are meeting with Chad Ramey. We are gonna yes. learn how to brew oh. beer. Is this pretty much something you've dreamed of since you were you know, 21? You know what, like like five <laughs> years ago, we sold a beer brewing kit and it felt like the play school thing. I, I can't tell you a single thing that I did. I just know that beer came out the other end. <laughs> and so I'm so excited <laughs> to actually process all the different aspects of it. This looks a little awesome. bit more complicated than the easy bake oven. Uh, Chad, where do we start? Start. The first things first is you have to go get, you know, your, your kit, right? We're going to be looking at the extract brewing method today. There's some more complicated ways we can do it, but this is a good one to start with. The chat says, let's go out into the field and uh, get our wheat. And... <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like, we begin by sowing. <laughs> Till the fields. <laughs> I'm sorry, continue. You're joking, but we have seeds over here, so oh, let, oh let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a minimum setup, how much money are we spending? I believe the $150, $200 range will get you a prepackaged kit. Okay. You can go a little cheaper if you already have a pot to boil in, um, buckets, things to measure. Equipment for measuring, uh, for volumes, for weights and masses, a big uh, bucket, a thing to boil stuff in. I guess everything else is ingredients, right? Yes, for the most part. Um, so with any beer, you know, you have malt, hops, water, and yeast. Those are the four main ingredients as, you know, the beers have, have spoken to you guys about. At sure, length. sure. Jeb? Yeah. That's for later, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is Texas, may I remind you? No, that, that has to be the hops, right? Right, right, and you can see they're oh. vacuum sealed, too, yeah. All right, well, let's dive in. Yeah. Okay, so the first up, you're right, water. Um, I generally use tap water for most of my brewing. You can also use RO water as well, so that's water with pretty much everything stripped out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, we have good water here in Austin. So yeah, let's fill it up. If one of you guys wants to hold this hose here. You can be the hose holder. You'll notice it's a white hose too. Um, if you're working in your garage, you know, oftentimes you have the green hose. Well, this one's actually made for drinking water for RVs. So those green hoses can pick up flavor. And if you're brewing a light beer, you can taste that. Yeah, anyway. it's, it's like, a, yeah. Yeah, man, I, my childhood. That's very specific flavor yeah, of yeah. drinking water from the hose. Right, or or, or, or a, uh, I always think about it with squirt guns. Oh, like, that's, yeah. That's summertime <laughs> childhood. Yeah. Right? In fact, I might do that on purpose to make a beer. <laughs> I think it's also mononucleosis, uh, actually. <laughs> right, we're filling it how high? We're doing a three gallon batch today, but we're gonna go ahead and fill it up to four gallons. Okay. Um, the reason for that is we're gonna boil it for a while, right? And when you boil it, it evaporates. Got so it. you're gonna lose some water. One good rule about water for brewing is taste it before you brew with it. If it doesn't taste good, it's, it's not gonna make good beer. So. Okay. Just make sure it tastes good. What we're gonna do first is add in an agent that's gonna help eliminate that chloramine. So it's actually in this in this bag here. So this is potassium metabisulfite. We're looking at getting 0.01 grams for the three gallons that we're using. Great. And that's pretty darn close. This is something that's not gonna give you any off flavors if you overshoot just a touch. Here, we're looking at getting 3.2 grams of this calcium chloride. And this calcium chloride, it acts as something just to kind of smooth out the finish on the beer, makes it a little smoother. So and again, would, it, would it be harmful for me to just taste it? Um, I've never done it, but you can oh, probably, really? I don't know, I don't know. I don't see what know. it, let, let, let me know how it tastes. This will, this will not be the last time <laughs> that happens, by the way. Uh, you can feel like it gets warm. You can feel like a, a reaction. Okay. It's exothermic is what it, you have blisters on your lips now. What's no, that? no. <laughs> Actually, I do, because we did the fire eating. <laughs> <laughs> and then this last one, we're just doing two grams of the gypsum. And this kind of helps bring out, bring out the hop character. So the one thing we didn't actually mention today is what are we brewing? Right? That, that's a good question. Yeah. Hey, I have a question. What are we brewing? Beer? <laughs> so there's a lot of different beer styles out there, right? And today we're going to do a hoppy wheat. So the style, you could call it like an American wheat ale. Oh, right on. Yeah. 
So, so uh, what brand would this be comparable to? It's gonna actually be close to a brewery up in Indiana, Three Floyds, uh, Gumball Head. It's okay. been around for a while. Um, oh, very specific, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Do we mix this up or do we do we shout curses at it? How does this work? Yeah, so go ahead, why not? We'll give it a little, little spin here. All right, it looks pretty okay. dissolved. Yeah, good enough. So we're gonna transfer that over to the boil kettle now. Okay, now important question, is this stainless steel or aluminum? Ah! Whoa! Right. That was a moment. Well, this is stainless steel, actually. Aluminum will work, too, if you have one of those. The only thing you want to be careful for is don't scratch it up inside. After it oxidizes, it kind of has a little protective layer on it. Oh, so it'll so, start to rust. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you, it'll give you metallic off flavors in your beer as well. Oh. The idea here is we're going to bring it up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. OK. So it's going to take a little bit, you know, 15, 20 minutes to get there. Before we add this malt extract, we are actually gonna steep some specialty grains in there. Today, we're steeping the Crystal 20. That doesn't sound illicit at all. <laughs> we're gonna be steeping some Crystal 20 in your garage. <laughs> <laughs> and what is this, son? Oh, officer, it's just a little Crystal 20. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna need you to step out of the vehicle. <laughs> and, and this isn't gonna cause anyone to ask any questions <laughs> at all. If one of you wouldn't mind. Yes, sir. That bit. So this is a paint strainer bag. We're gonna wanna tie it off as well, unless yeah. we wanna hold on to it for 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah, no. So 15 whole yeah. minutes of steepage. Yeah, we do you, get do you want to do you want to agitate it at all? Do I do I just drop this in? Yeah, just drop it in. We'll right. we'll push it down with the spoon. Just to, yeah. or, there you go. It's so yeah. satisfying. It's like so. a tea steeping. And that's 15 minutes. Uh, so at this point, what? I just reach down with my hand and pull it out. It's gonna be pretty hot. So it depends how <laughs> temperature so tolerant yes. you are. So yeah. <laughs> all right. When I'm just sort of wedging this, there we go. Uh, 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 yeah, uh. Probably grab the top. There of you go. And so you don't want to squeeze it after you pull it out. Okay. It's, number Super one, hot. it's, it's going to be hot, but also that'll extract tannins from the grain as well. So that stuff that'll make. So the, right now we got mostly flavor, and, and tannins are what that that bitter kind of thing. Or? Kind of bitter, but astringency is what it's known as. So okay. kind of a mouth puckering, dry. Ah, after okay. you take a sip on the finish. All right, well, if one of you guys wants to do the striker, we'll oh, we're boiling turn now? her back on. Yeah, so the idea now is we were at 160, so we want to get it warmer again. We want to get closer to boil. Um, we're but not, not, but not quite boiling? Well, we want it to boil, right? And then we're going to take it off, and that's when we add in the extract. Got so, it. Ah. Hold off on that for now. That'll okay. help it dissolve better. All right, guys, it's boiling. Yeah, so so I guess we what back off the heat, so we're just under boiling. Seems like I'll a go ahead. open toed one person job. Yeah, <laughs> don't want to coordinate a disaster here. So we'll set it down there for now, and it's time to add our extract in. And this is a uh, Bavarian wheat extract. So it actually has half wheat and half Pilsner malt. Pilsner, which okay. is a barley. Um, in there. So we scaled that down. So we're going to add in four pounds. So we got to measure precisely, or is this another so one this is we can three, eyeball? And this is one pre measured. So okay. We're so we'll, good to go. So you can definitely get the aroma now, right? Yeah. It smells a little different. Yeah, kind of bready. Man, awesome. that looks pretty well blended. Yeah. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to brag. Professional <laughs> blender. <laughs> this back over, lift it up. Okay, so what are we doing now? We're gonna cook this again? We're gonna add our first edition of hops. This hop here is known as Bravo. Kind of like grapes or other things, there's a lot of different types of hops, right? Different characteristics from them. And Bravo is a hop that, it doesn't give you a lot of flavor or aroma. It's actually mostly used for bittering. Hmm. So the first hop edition that you put into your boil It'll be in that boil pot usually for 60 minutes. And the idea is most of the aroma or flavor compounds will have boiled off at that point. Mm -hmm. But the bittering agent, the iso acid, alpha acids will remain. And being that they boil for 60 minutes means you get a good level of bitterness out of them. So we are looking at only 0.3 ounces of these Bravo. Oh, so a little goes a long way. So a little bit. It's a little bit less bitter than like a pale ale. 
but it'll you'll still be perceivable. If you want to do the honors, you can toss. Oh, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> Give it a whiff. Give it a whiff. Christmas. <laughs> oh man, that's good. <laughs> that's that is good. So you can look at it two ways. The first, you can boil it off to hit your target volume. Which, in our case, we started with four gallons, and we want to theoretically be at three gallons. Get three gallons, right. And the second would be to hit your target starting gravity. And that's how later we're going to measure the amount of alcohol, is the difference in the specific gravity from the before to the after fer fermentation? Yes. Um, essentially, it's a measurement of the sugar content of the solution. Got and it. to your point, if you look at how much sugar you started with and how much you finished with, you can figure out how much ethanol that yeast produced. Got it. Right. Okay, so yeah, I could see what you're talking about, about yeah. boiling over. So, you just wanna hit that sweet spot. Right, and one thing to note too is that when you add the hops in there, there's a lot of nucleation points in those pellets. That will sometimes cause a boil over. If you want to grab the spoon, one thing I like to do as well is I don't know if you can see on the top, but some of those hot oh, particles sorry, are, are up there in the foam. So I just like to give it a, a stir around the edge, knock, knock those back into solutions so that they are actually doing their job. Well, that's looking good. Per our recipe, we still need to add some more hops, right? So some for flavor and aroma. Okay. More hops. So yes, we have some here. So this one is normally used, yeah, at the end of the boil to get those special characters out of okay, there. Okay, got it. Yeah, so Amarillo is the hop we're using today. We're wanting to add one ounce of this guy. I usually put Pineapple Express in mine, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that actually does look more like rabbit food or something. There we go. Oh, oh nice perfect, there. nailed it, one ounce on the Boom. nose. Okay, so yeah, yeah give that a whiff. That. That's gonna smell a lot different. Ooh, than, yeah. yeah! It does oh, so yeah. smell a bit like Pineapple Express. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just drop this in? Yeah, go ahead. Do, do we do any fancy um, stirring or? If it does anything funky, we can stir, but uh, yeah, just try not to. Yeah. I know what happened in Brian's brain when he smelled that. It was, mmm, IPA. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'm gonna take a little sample out of there too, just a little wort. Oh yeah, yeah. wort, wort is, is what we've made. It's, it's this is sauce. wort. Yeah, wort right. is, is, is the sauce that becomes the food for the yeast that becomes the beer. Okay. Right. Um, the idea is in a few minutes when that is cooled down, we will use this fancy device here, a refractometer. I've never seen this thing before. It looks like uh, an eyepiece for, uh, a, a, it looks like some kind of blue prism and, and, a, and a, a maybe a light diffuser, is that what that is? Where do you put the kyber yeah. crystal? <laughs> well, so the idea is different concentrations of sugar water will refract light going through it at a different angle. Mm -hmm. oh. So that's how this device works. You take a sample of room temperature wort and you put it on the glass here between there and the lid. Oh! Close it, point it at a light source, and there's a little level in there, and you can read the sugar concentration. While we let that sample cool down, it's a little warm right now, we can add in the last few things that we need to. Um, the first of which is this yeast nutrient. You know, this is, this is the vitamins, the food for the yeast that helps them grow. Got it, so yeah. it's not the yeast itself, this is just more extra good stuff to make the yeast happy. Right, right. And what ratio do we want of this? So I usually do about two teaspoons of this. So we'll grab this here. This is half teaspoon, so we'll, we'll do four of these. So we'll go ahead and flip okay, this here. I'm gonna hit record. Up. Okay. okay, put this on here. Oh, you barely put just a yeah, thin layer so, on Yeah, so, okay. Okay, now, so you look, here, we go in. Oh, it looks so scientific. Just shy of 15. Huh. We were aiming for about 14, so eh, that'll be fine. <clears throat> what that so, means is there's a little more sugar in there than we anticipated, but okay. that'll just mean it's a little, gonna be a little bigger beer, a little more ABV. Uh, oh, got it, it means that there'll be more alcohol, because however much sugar there is, we can anticipate that much alcohol later on down the road. Right, two more things that we need to do. We are going to chill it down eventually, so we're gonna use this wort chiller. You run water through this, and as it's circling through the copper in there, it's extracting the heat. We still have two more things to do before we kill the heat. Uh, the first is we want to put in some Werflock. This is that fining agent we spoke about earlier that helps the beer be a little clearer. So the last thing that we're looking to do is our final hop addition. So More since, hops. Yeah, and since these have been put in right at the end of the process, you're not getting much bitterness from them. So what we can do now is start chilling it, and while we're chilling it, we can kind of go into sanitation. So one of the things now 
that were probably still warm enough where it wouldn't make a difference. But anything that you're putting into there at this point, you risk potentially infecting your beer with. So it's always good to keep things sanitized. Yep, we are at 150. Well, all right, guys. How we looking? We are as cold as we're gonna get now, this warm Texas tap. Yeah, water. right? So, we are done with this guy. Let's go ahead, if one of y'all wants to grab yep. that side, we can move it up to the table here. Okay. Okay, so we've already gone ahead and rinsed and cleaned this carboy. So this is a glass fermentation I'm vessel. I'm sorry, what did you call it again? A carboy. It's a carboy? Not, not a truck boy, but a carboy. Gotcha, yeah. okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a giant glass vessel. While you're doing this, you have two different things you can do because once you have the wort in there, you know we were giving it those uh, nutrients earlier, the vitamins. Well, another thing that they need early on in this process, oh, excuse me, <laughs> is oxygen as well. So what I have with me over here is actually an oxygen tank. Now, wait a minute, I thought you didn't want oxygen. So it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Because oxygen is a spoilage factor for finished beer, but for oh. our fresh wort and yeasties. But the yeast, because the yeast are gonna poop out CO2, that means that they're aerobic, which means they need, need oxygen. oxygen. Wow, okay. Right. And we'll give it a quick spritz here. And I run it at about, I think it's an eighth liter per minute, that's the, the rate. And I, about 30 seconds is what I usually do. We're almost there, right? Wow. We have the wort in there but we need to add some yeast now. And in this case, for this beer, we're using an English ale yeast. It's not gonna be quite as clean as American yeast. It'll give you a little fruity esters, which should go great in this beer. I already pre-measured this water. It's about 90 degrees. And so what we're doing now is rehydrating the yeast. Since you can see here, it was nice and dry, kind of granular. And what this does is kind of prevent it from getting shocked into a sugar solution. Just this nice water bath. I think we're good. It looks like a nice milky consistency. So I don't know if one of you guys wants uh, to do, do the honors. Do the honors, sir. But if you do it nice and slow through, oh. <laughs> oh, perfect. So now it begins, right? Yeah, so now fermentation. So in my case, I don't know if you can see behind me here, but I have a fermentation fridge. So that's something that I adapted with a temperature controller to keep it at whatever temp I want. Oh, that's great. So yeah. the more precise you can be with the temperature, the more uh, ac the more reliable your uh, output brew is gonna be. Yeah, because yeast are very temperamental. You ferment them too cold and they'll just give up after a while. Too oh. hot, you'll get higher fusel alcohols, off flavor, things you don't really want in your beer. Next step is we put it for, what, two weeks? Yeah, generally about two weeks. And what people will do is they'll take a hydrometer measurement after that, make sure it's hit the final gravity that they were expecting. A couple days later, they can do it again, make sure it hasn't changed anymore. And, and the purpose of this is to, I guess, know whether or not you've hit the alcohol by volume that you want. One of the reasons you wanna make sure that it's done fermenting is if you put it in those bottles too soon, you may get what's a called a bottle bomb. So too much carbonation, the glass can't stand it, boom, explodes. Okay, so. This is the modern road. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're trying to avoid by taking a couple measurements towards the end, making sure it's finished. But yeah, the next steps are two weeks from now, we would transfer it to a bottling bucket, mix it with you know some sugar, fill up bottles individually, cap them off, and wait maybe another week or two, and it should be good to go. Dude, let's, let's get to fermenting. Yeah. And time travel. And while we were time traveling, Chad, what did we miss? Well, about two and a half months. <laughs> two and a half <laughs> months time. in which he told them bedtime stories. He hugged them every <laughs> night. He said, don't worry, someday you're gonna be a big, beautiful beer. So what did you do to this beer while we were away? Well, Brian covered it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, weird, yeah, great. Well, if, if you remember, we left it in that big glass jar carboy situation and we put it in that fermentation fridge. So I'm curious. I, you know, will open that door once a day and just look in there, see what's happening, but, you know. What kind of disasters but, are you looking for? I assume like, you know, if it's there's glowing green fungus or something, yeah, that's, that's like, an obvious sign. Call Kurt Russell to bring his flamethrower. Exactly. I mean. Well, you know, you want to make sure that 
something's happening, right? That the yeast is working. And what's nice about those glass vessels is you can see in them. So you'll see a lot of bubbling and what they call the krausen at the top. It's this th thick, creamy, bubbly layer of foam that floats on top. So I would guess that as long as you're seeing action, for lack of a better word, you know, some kind of bubbling up or whatever, you're like, yeast, you're doing your job. But then they, they, they what, they, like we talked about before, they fill everything with CO2 and then it gets infused in the liquid? Yeah, it does. And it's, it's eating all of that sugar in there, right? And eventually there's not gonna be any sugar left. Right. Or that not much left and the yeast doesn't want anymore. So it starts settling out and you'll stop, you'll start to see the foam or whatever come, come down, settle down, and it stops churning and it kind of settles out. Uh, is there, is there a, a perfect moment to have a beer? Sure, you know, there's kind of a window, right? And it depends on the style. So our beer was kind of a pale ale, some more hoppy, and those beers are best fresh. So within about two weeks, you're right, for like an ale, you want to bottle it and drink it, and usually it's ready to go. I'd say, you know, people will, between like a two month window, somewhere around there is generally kind of that point of, of freshness for this style. Got it. But uh, you, so so yeah. we're, we're right at the last minute. Yeah. Modern yes. Rogue style. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, hello, are we about to miss the best opportunity? Uh, we're here just in time. All right, so I, I guess we, we taste. This is where we have to remember what the beerists taught us. Oh, uh, yeah, I wasn't yeah. listening. You look at the, uh, <laughs> yeah, luckily there's a video, don't worry about it. <laughs> the visual elements for cloudiness, the aroma, right. the uh, articulation. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 in there. So we do want to get, we want to let that foam come up so that we're able to appreciate the aromatics of it. And, and what type of beer did we make? So this was called Gumball Head was the name, but it's like a pale ale with some weed in it. So yeah, pretty decent. It has what in it? Some wheat. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, heard, I heard something very different. Yeah, <laughs> like, man, it's crazy times we live in. <laughs> Are we about to be demonetized? <laughs> this is one of those moments where the nature of the glass matters because we're able to smell all the aromatics in there. You want to let the foaminess dissipate. And then, uh, oh my God, we made this. This is a beer yeah. we made. Yeah. Toast, toast, oh, toast. Oh, here, no, this is you, this is you. Okay, okay, cheers. I mean, it tastes like my favorite IPA. It's amazing. And, okay. uh, really? Awesome. It's, got, it's got that right amount of bite in it. Um, wow, this is way good. It's, uh, it's something that you're not gonna guzzle down all at once. It's got a little bit of a potent kick. Dude, I feel like we just stole fire from the gods. Chad, where can everybody follow your adventures? Sure, I have an Instagram, so you can find me at Chad Homebrews. And uh, you can find Brian probably in your garage. He knows Literally, where he I'm going to crawl all the way in Ooh, here it's with him. all of the beers. It's going to be a problem. <laughs> it's going to be now. great. He's like, it's make gonna me be. more of it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was free. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 um. All right, I can't get this thought out of my head. Oh, boy. What if you added to the mash in the beer the buckwheat from a hollow pillow? Oh, it'll be, it'll make you even sleepier. Yeah, well, you could call it. Uh, okay, you got it. Hello Hops. Hello Hops! Mm -hmm. You're welcome, Hello Pillow. We should explain for those who don't know, Hello Pillow is our favorite pillow in the entire freaking planet. And it's loaded with buckwheat husks, and you wouldn't think that that would be comfortable, right? Oh no, well, and it so is. It really is, it sounds weird, but first advantage, when you're laying on a pillow, one side gets warm, you flip it over, you never have to do that. It's breathing, <laughs> air flows through the thing. Second of all, I sleep with headphones, and they always hurt against my head, so instead I just sort of make a little pocket and I lay down, everything's super comfortable. Third, it is heavy and malleable. I sometimes lay it on my chest and it's like I just get pressed to sleep which is weird but don't judge me and last of all you wouldn't think this is a benefit those buckwheat husks make like a white noise have you noticed yes. that I was gonna say that it sounds like it's, it's like, like ocean. a seashell up to your ear that's what it is it's so soothing it's like Oh, I'm gonna shuffle a little bit just so I can hear that soothing sound of the ocean there. So we got a few samples. There's one that I have at home in my bed, but I put the other one here at the Modern Rogue World headquarters, and we've had a few guests, and like two of them had said, so uh, what's that pillow that you got? And I'm like, hellopillow.com slash rogue. Yes, and uh, right now you can try it for 60 nights. Risk-free, send it back if you don't like it, but you're gonna like you're it. You're gonna like it. Plus also, if you buy multiple units, you get $20 off per unit, totally worth it. Just outfit your whole freaking house. Yes, so go to hollowpillow.com forward slash rogue right now. And keep us in business. I guess you also have to buy the, buy I mean, it. you could go there and just yeah. look at it. You gotta try it. What was the name of the beer? 
Oh, hollow hops. Hollow hops. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, don't steal it. Yeah, steal it. Or pay us. Yeah, I, I guess that's not stealing it. The good news is if you steal from us, uh, you'll sleep well afterwards <laughs> because you have a hollow pillow. Holy cow, you wonderful, wonderful rogues. One million subscribers, and we owe it all to you guys. You guys are the best thing in our lives. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're digging this content, don't forget about the Scam Nation channel. It's 800 episodes all about the scoundrel side of things. We have a subreddit and, of course, our beautiful, beautiful patrons. Oh, love you guys.